The Doncaster Bells are without a doubt one of the biggest names in women's football. Founded in 1969 as the Bellevue Bells by a group of young and ambitious women, they're now celebrating their 50th year with some of the country's most promising young players. Founder and original Bell Sheila Edmonds played for the side for 25 years and is still at the club she fought so hard to build 50 years later. We started off brothers and sisters kicking the ball about in the street and we used to sell goal, a group of us used to sell goal and goal tickets on the terraces at Bellevue. So my school friends were doing that, so I went along as well. It was one way of getting in free to watch the Rovers. So you'd be on the terraces sell, selling these tickets and then over a period of time we decided we wanted to play ourselves. Late 60s, early 70s, the ban on women's football had been in place. The only time you saw women playing football were in charity games where they wanted them with pigtails and running about all girly-girly, playing against the men and I didn't want to be involved in that. I never thought I'd still be doing it 50 years later or being involved 50 years later. I think probably one of the most notable moments would be 1983 Cup Final for the, what was then the Women's FA Cup Final. Um, simply because the club had never been in a cup final, so it was our first appearance. We won 3-2. I was the captain, so I got to pick up the trophy. Didn't get any better than that, really. <laughs> it was a superb day. Kirsty Smith grew up in a time where the Bells were in some of the top tiers of women's football. Her and fellow teammate Chloe Bethel agree that it's the family feel the club has which has kept its reputation and success all these years later. So for me when I come in, I remember like telling family going, oh yeah, I'm going to train with Bells. They were like, oh that's, that's like a really big club because it's known as the biggest women's club. So at first it was, but then I think because everyone's so welcoming and it's, the club is just such a family that you don't really think about it much. Yeah, I would say for me, it's, it's uh, being, I actually live around in this area as well, so so mentioning that I play for John Bells, it go, goes a long way. Um, a lot of people know um, the club, they know the reputation, and they know it, it, what it stands for. So um, I think for me, it was just the change in, in, in just a new team really, and just uh, getting along with them, and, and obviously a different league and a different challenge, but as far as the club go, it goes around this area and, and, and beyond, I think it's, it's, ma it's massive. People know exactly what it is and its reputation and what it stands for. I think that just something clicked within all of us that we knew how to take whatever we did on training onto the match day. Yeah, that's always been a challenge for us going, going forward, we're taking what we're actually doing in training and putting it into a, a match situation. I feel like we've, we've evolved with that. Um, we're starting to, the things in the drills that we do, we're starting to, uh, starting to pay off in the games as well, especially in our last game against Sheffield, which were a tough one. Um, we started to see things that were coming through from training. Most of the first team came up from the development squad this last season. Previous development manager Zoe Shaw is now the head coach of the first team and has been in charge since summer 2018. After working with the girls from a young age, the bond between manager and player is pretty strong. Obviously it's been a tough season uh, from where we were last, last season. With the squad that we've got so young, so next season will be more focused based around the team and their development, a bit more pace that's right for them rather than trying to cram so much in so quick to try and survive this season so yeah, just about developing the team as a whole. It's been a tough start. I think going forward the second half of the season they've sort of like got the bases, they've been grounded a little bit um, and they've had that confidence so I think the second half of the season has been really good for them. We've got the ability, we've got technical ability, we've got the right players but you can't give them experience at 16 and 17 so that's where we struggled a little bit. Former players see the club as a highlight in their careers. Sam Tierney was picked up by the Bells at grassroots and won the league with them last season. When I was growing up, um, especially being from Sheffield and being a young footballer, like Doncaster Bells was sort of, it was massive. Um, everyone was very apparent on the history. It was kind of like embedded into us, the history of the Bells and what they'd done, how long they'd been going and what they'd done for women's football was massive. And I think it was a real aspiration for us young players, uh, female footballers, wanting to have a career in football, that that was the route. Don Bells at the time, the manager was Glenn Harris when I was 16 and he sort of, he took me in and he was like, you know, like just get a feel for the club and straight away I could just, I could just tell it was amazing. Like everyone talks about it and like people don't really get it until you're in that environment, but it really was a family club. This was 
from the fans. It was very family orientated club and the fans were literally like our 12 man. I know that's very cliche, but like they were. And if you speak to a lot of people, they'll say that. But this was the fans player of the year award that I got. And this meant a lot to me because some of these fans still come and watch me now. Like, even though I'm not at Bells and they, they travel the country um, to come and watch all the players. But it's special because we actually, I think we should give back to the fans because they did a lot for the club. They volunteered on a lot of our games and helped us out. So this is another thing I'll keep. The Bells won the Women's Super League 2 last season, the first time they'd won a trophy in years. Since then, the Bells have had a tough season, but Sheila says that that win was just as important as winning the 1983 FA Cup. I've always said that winning the Women's FA Cup for the first time in 1983 meant so much to me. But last year, when we won WSL 2, that was the first time in a long, long time that we actually won. So winning this trophy, it meant just as much as back in 1983, because it had been so long since we won. And this Women's Super League, as it was, we'd never actually won. We'd gone up as in second position, but to actually get that, it was amazing. And to have won by 10 clear points, and to have won it two games before the end of the season. Brilliant, absolutely. And we won the league and then lost our sponsor, we then lost all our players and we lost our manager and we had to make a decision. Do we call it a day in our 50th year or do we start again? And Julie Chipchase and I sat down and had some really long, hard, difficult conversations and we decided let's go with our philosophy of building with young players and we restart. And that yellow and blue shirt, people put that on with pride, that Bell's badge it means the world. The young side's long-term goal is to work their way back up to the top tier of women's football. It'll be tough, but with the support around them, they'll surely keep fighting for years to come.